congratulate uh, Engineer Zambia, Honorable Kimilu. I just got information today that uh, WIPA members from Makweni were actually received invitation to go to State House. <laughs> I don't know why they're so selective. <laughs> yeah, I just add that. Uh, and they declined. Uh, politely, politely. Because you can send very powerful messages very politely. Because if you are going to make sense of, of uh, democratic gains, you do not go, as uh, Adam Zolo has put it, cannibalizing political organizations and, and inviting members without reference to their leadership. Uh, it is unthinkable. Therefore, uh, I saw the other saying that WIPA is going to State House after, after our colleagues. <laughs> uh, I haven't heard anybody saying they're going there. I must thank the member for Mwingi Central, Gideon Mulyungi. I'll give him I'm chasing just an example. He was with us in Kamukunji, in Kibra, and actually <laughs> went a step further, declared himself a general from his side of the world. Uh, but he was invited by Moses Kuria to State House in Mombasa when uh, the president was uh, doing, and, and I use the word president advisedly, was opening some factory. And so because there's coal in Mwingi Central, a lot of coal deposits, um, it was someone to go and explain why him and I don't know why they left Irene Kasalu, <laughs> the county women rep for, for Kitui, because I know she has been uh, in the forefront in opposing coal mining in that area because of the current uh, uh, climate change arrangements all over. But Gideon went there, but he did the decent thing. He said, I've been summoned to State House. He called his party leader. He called his party leader. And I think that's the way to do it because of the urgency of the matter and the, 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 his committee was in Parliament. He just had the decency to call me and I straight away said, please go. Because as Jeremiah said, if there are issues to do with your own constituency, you, you should feel free to do something. But then, then there's, uh, <laughs> take that against uh, the negative, the opposite situation of a conspiracy to defraud democracy. A conspiracy to defraud democracy. Last night I was watching CNN and a gentleman who is German has written a book, Ndugu, which I think we should look for and read. And Adams, please, I want to challenge you to look at that book and make a critique of it. Uh, the title of the book is uh, Democratic Capitalism by one wolf. And this morning, listening to BBC and the Director General of the World Health Organization, she was a Nigerian lady, very capable, and been asked, uh, what do you say to the fact that uh, globalization has died? <laughs> and she said, uh, allow me to differ with you. It hasn't. Of course, you are seeing, it, like in the case of Europe, nationalism, European nationalism, and in the case of Donald Trump's America that time, America first, and uh, but NAFTA arrangements, which is Mexico, America, and I think Brazil, or is it Brazil, the NAFTA arrangements out there, Mexico, Mexico, America, Canada, thank you, is still in place. And we have in our region, of course, uh, the building blocks towards African unity, the Abuja Declaration, if you remember, if some of you have looked at that. And therefore, the fact that we are strengthening regional integration as within East African community, that's why we sing the East African National uh, uh, Anthem. I don't think we are cannibalizing our, our approach to regional unity. But Brexit, perhaps, was to blame for that kind of uh, impression. And somebody last night was saying, Europeans, and actually quick to say, 
when uh, Zelensky, President Zelensky, makes a surprise visit to to visit Prince Charles and and the House of Commons, and addresses them, and asking. In fact, you are reminded of what Churchill once said during the World War, Second World War, when he went to the U.S. and said, "Give us the tools, and we'll finish the job." I'm saying this as a background to what I'm just about to say. That as a nation, uh, welcome Sanda Ndugu Eugene Wamalo. Tumpigie makofu. And, and Dap, Dap and I think Kanu are uh, really represented. When I, when I heard them saying Kanu is going to status, I started laughing. Uh, so, fellow Kenyans, because you are leaders, if you are not careful, you are going to follow you're going to find your own constitu constituents ahead of you. And that's where they are. We saw that in Jakaranda. I saw that in Kibra. You're most likely going to see that in Mavoko tomorrow. And therefore, as a leader, you need to ask your question. Do you want to lead or you want to be led <laughs> by your own people? Something is grossly wrong with our country. But I draw a lot of satisfaction out of the fact that Constitution 2010 is in place. And so, if it was not that for Constitution, some of us would be in detention, for sure. Therefore, Adams, those of our fellow countrymen who struggled for democracy in this country remain our heroes today. Because of them, we have now established a tradition where even if you are president, Dugu Raila, if you are the president today, you will require <laughs> William Ruto as leader of your position. I saw last night during the address of the State of the Nation by President Joe Biden, perhaps the biggest democracy in our constitution 2010 is fashioned in a very straight way, very strong way along the American constitution. He had to go there and plead with speaker, the speaker who is Republican after Nancy Pelosi left. You now the Republicans have gotten the leadership of, of the Congress. Now William Ruto and his people did not have to, to cannibalize our majority. He could still have come and say, let's have a, a bipartisan approach. Joe Biden was there. This is the country we are in now. You cannot, you cannot, you cannot cannibalize democracy in this country. It will not happen. Not under Constitution 2010. Therefore, I just want to encourage us to be very strong and very focused. Very strong and very focused. Uh, I had uh, one day say that even if you are left 50 of you or two or one, I think as Jeanette who said even if it's one, you are still the majority. This is a mi the minority. But this is a team. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to encourage all of us tomorrow to talk in Amnahi, <laughs> to end the Mavoko, this will be a rally enough. Because as I told you, if you don't do that, if you don't decide in your own mind and your own spirit, that you want to be part of the action. Please do not blame your constituents when after four years or thereabouts, they throw you out. Do you think these people went to state house today? Uh, the ones who went the other day, if there's an election to be called, would they really? Poor Jalango. In fact, I was looking for him. I'm still going to look for Jalango. Because he was here. We must also exercise tolerance. <laughs> when somebody wants to say sorry, don't throw them out. Ah, I see that is a, a point of departure. I will not withdraw my remarks. <laughs> uh, I will not withdraw my remarks. But imagine the state of mind poor Jalango is in. Because Kibra now is his hostile ground. You know, you are supposed to enjoy, you are supposed to enjoy your tour of duty as a, an MP for your constituency. Let me tell you. I must congratulate our brother Tim Wanyonyi, and I'll tell you why. 
His brother is Speaker of the National Assembly. But he is elected on an ODM ticket in Nairobi. And he's here. And he's not afraid. If anybody was to go to State House, surely Tim Wanyonye should have been leading them. Because the Speaker is there. <laughs> my brother, my brother who forgot his uh, struggling brother when we were eating tear gas with him and Tinga. My friends, time is extremely of the essence. What you decide to do out of Manzoni today and tomorrow may shape your future positive progression in elective politics. I don't say you are nominated because even then you may want to run at some stage. So I want to thank all of you for standing firm. This is a time to stand very firm and stand up and be counted. An opportunity like this is very rare where leadership is expected of you. Please do not allow your so that it will be said that the 13th parliament was the parliament that brought down the democratic gains that this country had made. So, me, Mr. Kongasana, because I just wanted to share those thoughts um, and before I invite uh, my brother Eugene to come and greet you. Um, and, and so, you know, this was your retreat, actually. So, I thank you for inviting me. I thank you so much. You know, you didn't have to invite me because it's your retreat. Eh? Nani anaomba kura? Kwa ni kura ni leo? I'm here to accompany Baba. Watch a year, Mambuengine. Sindio, before we do that, we have some work to do. And that is to salvage our democracy. You're going to look at those figures. By the way, with all the noise that KK are capable of doing, do you remember I said they are Kenya Kwisha? Hey, with all the noise they are capable of making, none of them has contravened the, the findings of the whistleblower because they are absolutely truthful. Ah, I, I like it, Adams. I uh, like your sense of opt optimism. When you think, even when you said, even the compromised judiciary <laughs> will take judicial notice of the development, the political developments in this country. So be there, be a champion. Eh, be a champion. Let us really make sure this country is safe for the present generation and the generations to come. If we falter and go and eat to Gali or whatever it is, uh, we will be counted on the wrong side of history. Some of us have decided to stand for what is in the best national interest of our country. And this time, we are called upon to stand firm and be a true buffalo soldier. Because if you are not, the alternative, the alternative is you go home. Yeah. If you want to go home, Mapema, start now. But I'm quite sure you now know. Even in your heart, in your, in your, in your own mind and heart, I'm sure you, remember, you can feel that all is not well with our country. And the people themselves are crying out. The confusion in the education sector, <laughs> real confusion. Uh, people think, High cost of living is global. No. But we had an opportunity when former President Uhuru had to negotiate tough with the IMF executive director, whatever the title is, to say, please allow, my people are going to perish. We want these subsidies in fuel, yeah, so that we at least can manage to get around. But uh, for anybody to jump up and say, oh, it is a world problem. No, no, no. Therefore, I stand and dig in for sovereignty of this nation. Because it's a very important nation in the world. Even if you are to look at the biblical teachings and see what happened when and wherever. Uh, and then the spiritual dimensions of where we are. Even the remnant of the church. 
is beginning to stand up. What was a remnant of the church? Because the church stood compromised. I'm beginning to say, wait a minute. All seems to have gone wrong. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome Dugu Eugene Wamalo. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Honorable Stephen Kalonzo Msioka, the Honorable Raila Odinga,